So let's go on then to those uh, years in SNCC, mm -hmm. a few years when you become the communications director. And SNCC is obviously just making headlines all over the place and, and accomplishing so much in terms of voter registration and uh, sort of a, a kind of political activism and empowerment. Why did you end up communications director in that? Because I had a facility for writing. I'd always been a quick writer and a good writer, but I could very quickly write something that explained whatever this thing was. And we had a need for someone to write press releases, and we had a newsletter called The Student Voice, and we needed somebody. It was essentially a newspaper of the civil rights movement, of SNCC, and we needed somebody who could write that very quickly. I could type. Um, and I, I could do it. And I think in, in SNCC, you did what you could do. And if you were good at this, you did this. If you were good at that, you did that. I was good at this, and I did it. And I was eager to I liked doing it. I enjoyed doing it. I had envisioned for a while being a journalist. And this was like being a journalist. SNCC did something. I took notes. I interviewed people, and I wrote it up. And I could do it just like that. I was quick. Now, um, Peter Levy, in a book on civil rights leaders, mm -hmm. says about that time, uh, he, he calls you the odd man out, um, yeah. which is hard for me to understand. Yeah, but, me he's, too. but he says that about those years that um, basically you stayed out of harm's way and that you didn't really believe in physical bravado. So well, that was true then, that? that's true now. Um, if you look upon the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee organizationally, I was a bureaucrat. I worked in the central office. Mm -hmm. I went out in the field where danger was, but it was in and out. I would visit a project here to research it, to write about it, um, sometimes with a photographer who'd take pictures of it. I couldn't do that. Uh, so I wasn't in harm's way in the normal course of things. Um, and I certainly didn't seek out harm because I didn't want harm to come to me and had a great deal of respect and admiration for people who did, who were brave and who could face this kind of thing. And when I went to these places, Mississippi, rural Georgia, uh, Alabama, you know, I was terrified that something was gonna happen. And luckily for me, it never did, but mm -hmm. I knew people to whom things did happen and uh, I didn't want that to happen to me. So uh, you think your role as communications director came as a result of your writing ability, not out of, not, I mean, did it have anything to do with this desire with to sort of stay in the background, to uh, sort of not be on the front lines? It both had that, and I was uh, married and, you know, didn't want to leave an, a new family, sure. you know. The hard work was being done in these places where you had to live. And I was living in Atlanta and didn't want to move family to rural Mississippi or rural Alabama. Um, so it was probably a combination of just plain ordinary fear and circumstance. And the circumstance and the fear mm -hmm. kept me in the right. safe and secure bosom of Atlanta. Sure. And you've said of those years uh, that your experience at SNCC, you've used words in interviews like fantastic. You know, that those were fantastic they, years. These were fantastic years. And there's years. never been, you've even said there's never been anything like it. The, Would you stick by that? Life, I think you said that yes, in 1979. Yes, there's never been, in my life, there's never been anything like it. And I've had some wonderful experiences doing other things. But this was the most intense in my life. First of all, I'm surrounded by other people my age who are running, we're running this thing. This is, we're in charge. And that's awful heady to be 22, 23, 24, 25, and running this thing. And we were running it. We were in charge. So no older people saying do this or don't do that. So we did it ourselves. We raised the money. We did the work. We, we did, we did a, uh, a fabulous job. And the people with whom I'm working and who became closer friends than my high school classmates or than my college classmates, these people are my closest friends today. Uh, we just shared this intense experience likened to soldiers in a foxhole. Now, we're not really soldiers in a foxhole because I'm living in Atlanta and going out and some of these people out there are being shot at and beaten and some of them killed. But for the most of us, it's a rough life 
and uh, life way down on the income scale. Um, living in communal houses, uh, 10 guys living in a house, living in bunk beds and so on. So it's, it's not an easy life, but it's not like being at war. But it's intense, and you become so close to the people with whom you work that you are bound to them for the rest of your life. 